what it is you guys it is your girl cadillac i'm cadillac dixon i'm the draw my life prison wife i'm the legally blind artist that is rapping and painting for justice hoping to see justice before it all fades to black yeah it's your girl cadillac so guys i'm coming in like wee hours of this is the 18th girl y'all this is tax deadline day but i am coming through a little bit after 3 a.m today was a crazy day like a crazy weekend me and my husband marcello our daughter became a mother so this weekend has been full like full and I really have to thank my job for actually giving me that time off because that was very unplanned um our daughter got in an accident with an 18 wheeler and it really just like kind of sent her into labor like basically not really at the moment but it resulted in having a baby so thank god that you know it was what it was because instead of bringing home, it could have been something else. Just a few steps over, it could have been something else. So thank you. Thank you so much. I have got to be thankful. There are so many things that I don't have and that I, you know that I cry about not having. But I have got to thank God for what I do have. And, um... And so that was very eventful and I came home and kind of hung out with my other like extended family. Um, my cousin, the underscore almighty Mac made dinner. He is the blind chef. And after that, I came home and I have been trying to transfer all these millions of pictures that your girl took. <laughs> Yes, I got to archive everything from my memory. You know, I'm a keepsake, keepsake person. But then also for my husband, Marcello, who is currently incarcerated um, so that he can somewhat relive these moments um, whenever he is able to through photographs and videos. So I came home and I don't know, instead of just being down, I'm like, I got this urge and this feeling that it's 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 a bittersweet. It's sad and it's happy. Like to see number one, to see your daughter go through that type of pain. And I believe her birth was like <laughs> what she went through, I didn't go through. So that girl is a champ to even be able to get through that. But she made it. And, but to see her, you know, have her baby and uh, it just feels like my baby is leaving me now. I mean, when she have her baby now, it feels like I'm losing my baby. And I know that's just crazy. That's crazy. But yeah, so we're not really under the same roof anymore. And if y'all know me for any length of time, we were up under each other every waking moment and you know it's like not only I lost uh, but I didn't lose her but uh, my daughter our baby but we also somehow be became friends not that it was that friendship mother daughter thing uh uh no not ever she knew I was mama but we just did so much together and it's no longer like that manner so I'm seeing myself returning back to Kita who Kita well Cadillac y'all know me as was before I had her and before Marcello came into my life so I came home and I ran across this movie on Netflix, Net, girl, goodbye, on Pure Flix, <laughs> Pure Flix, Pure Flix, y'all, 
it is a Christian like streaming network, somewhat like Netflix, but it's all faith based movies. Now, this one caught my eye because it had Mr. David Banner. Yes. <laughs> and it was right about the topic y'all know I want to hear about. So in this movie, it's called Never Heard. If y'all haven't seen it, please go check it out. I literally just finished watching it. And I said I was going to take my time and write notes. Girl, goodbye. You know your girl ain't writing no notes on that movie. I'm just going to fly off the top of my head and tell you what happened in the movie, short synopsis, and how I feel about it. Okay, so the movie is about, and I don't even remember the people's names or anything, so I'm going to just refer to their character. So David Banner, his character, he is in prison wrongfully. Girl, he's in prison wrongfully. Um, He was with a character played by Robin Givens. Yeah, they brought her back. I don't, I don't know where girlfriend been, but they done brought her back. And she looked good. Like, girl, you've been gone for a million and one years and you still look good. And for their, their son, they had Romeo Miller as their son. Okay, so she's basically like me my real life character but um she kind of became bitter over her husband being in prison and yes I feel that that is true that will make you so bitter dealing with this system this the, I don't know why the heck they call it justice system there's no justice at all within it there's no justice no equality none of that exists in our justice system and it's sad but I am so glad that people are making movies like this to start you know letting people know what is really going on in our systems and it's going on right up under our noses and it doesn't really matter to you until it hits your home and don't think that it's so hard to hit your home. It can easily hit your home. And it has hit so many homes in America because America is one of the highest to incarcerate. Florida is one of the highest incarcerations of the America, you know, states and longest time served because we got that 85%. We have to do more time for crimes that if you did it in another state you would get substantially less time and you're going to do 85 percent of that time and florida decided get rid of parole so now at this point florida is reaching capacity of their prisons because they don't have a rollover rate where people serve their time and then they're let go florida decided break any law whether you broke it or not any infraction with the law results in the rest of your life and you just can't house or warehouse people for life and that's what they're trying to do and now they have a very like they have a lot of older and senior citizens that are in prison that you know take a lot of money to be able to incarcerate them though most of them can't even commit crimes if they wanted to, but they still decide to hold them because when when they say life, they mean life, baby. They mean it. They mean it. So bitter. That can make you bitter. You're fighting. You know you're innocent. You know you have all this proof. You know they convicted your husband on no proof, but yet he you struggle every day to raise the child that you know that the husband left behind you start out thinking and that was too in the movie they were married they actually were married and he said it didn't work out and that's because they went into it believing we're going to be man wife and son and all of a sudden, doing that whole, you know, 
it was snatched away from them. So Robin Givens, her character is like Biddle. <laughs> Biddle. <laughs> and um, so the son, Romeo, his character is like going out in the streets. That's what happened when the father's not in the house. It is not, this is not... <sighs> People think that the reason things are the way they are is because they somehow uh, we're just worse off or we're more crime ridden. We're more, you know, susceptible to sub no, girl, susceptible in committing crimes. No, baby, it's because our fathers are not in our homes and you're helping to make sure there's less fathers in the homes and less fathers lead to more boys growing up without fathers lead to higher incarceration rates. It's a design. It's design. It's a blueprint. Stop thinking it's a coincidence. It's a blueprint. Yes. So the son is out there and he's like basically following that street life, hustle life. I mean, a lot of times that's like almost the only choice that you are given, you know, and people are going to find a way to survive. So he finally at the end, and then I'm, I'm not going to tell you the whole story because you need to watch it. And plus I'm running out of time, girl. But uh, this guy that comes in and does this program in the prison actually was in the church. And he had a daughter and the daughter just basically just wanted his time, which I related to him to just always being busy, always working, like always trying to help others. And you get so busy that all your child really wants is your time. And that is the one thing not available to them, though you're financially taking care of them. But I wasn't quite like that girl because what I did was I was there for everybody. But then... I kind of just deleted sleep. Like I was not going to neglect time with our daughter because of that. Because I always felt like, you know, she already don't have her father and she doesn't need to not have her mother. So at that point, I just completely depleted myself by always staying up, always guzzling energy drinks, sleeping in a chair. So I, I would sleep in any uncomfortable position so that when my knees or my hands fall asleep, whatever fall asleep, I can wake up. So I can just get like two hours of sleep and then get back to this two hours of sleep and then get back to that. I was sleeping at parking lots in between work and school and daycare and all girl you have got to check out some of them videos so you can see this this storm this has been a storm but now this storm is a testimony girl what i've been through and i know i'm sure there are so many more that have been through worse yes but it's still my story to tell even if you have been through worse um i thank god i didn't go through the worst that you went through but this is still my story to tell and I'm going to tell it because there is another Kita out there somewhere. It's another. Okay. So he's like trying to tell the, they call them inmates. Girl, no, we do not call them inmates. They're incarcerated citizens. They're still citizens of the United States. Um, inmate is a derogatory term, but not everybody has caught on to that. So he's in there helping the incarcerated citizens um, be better fathers. And they kind of call him on that. Like, how are you going to be a better father if you always here and working and doing this and doing that? But girl, y'all got to go check that out. Maybe I'll do a part two once this upload, but we finna run out of time, girl. <laughs> Anyways, please check out Never Heard. And I love that that title because I felt like my story, our story, which is just not my story. It's a whole bunch of people in this country story has never been heard. People don't believe a man could be wrongfully convicted, but I'm here to tell you it can happen and it can happen to one of your loved ones. We have to stop this before it does. Anyways, hiss your girl, Cadillac. <laughs>